three, two, one. I'm going to assume it's just because you're on the exact other side of the world that it takes like five minutes for you to clap after I do. Probably. I see the spike on the audio, so we're good. Well, hello and welcome back to another one of the things it is we do. This time we have some multi-room action happening with my channel artist, Grecia. How are you this evening in New York? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. How's your morning in Australia? Ah, yeah, it's all right. It's a bit warm. It's a bit muggy. Nice. But, uh, that's fine. You're starting to get winter, right? Starting to, yes. Uh, I should say that Australia never really gets true winter. Is it always warm? It's always warm for me. Like, oh. for example, during <laughs> the day, no matter what season it is, I will always be wearing shorts. That's just the weather. Yeah, I mean, you need to, it's a little breeze down there, you know? <laughs> You do. You you need the breeze, you know, to keep you fresh and on your toes. I agree. Well, since you enjoyed Gracia's last interview so much, I thought this time I would open up the questions to all of you, the the people who are watching and such. So I have a list of questions for oh, you. Boy. Would you like to answer them? I would. Could I decide not to answer one if I if it's too much? You can, but I'm gonna call you out on it. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And I, I have to add I did not peep. Peep is the word. Peep is a word. Yeah. Because I didn't, I wanted to be surprised by all these questions. I didn't want to think about them beforehand so that it's like right in the moment. Well, we've got some surprises for you then. Uh, none of them should be too controversial. I think most of them are fairly, uh, maybe one or two. You know, let, let's just ask them. <laughs> so starting simply, what part of One Piece resonated with you most? I mean, obviously there's a million scenes. I think the most that resonates with me it's multiple moments really especially with Luffy whenever he acknowledges that he needs his friends like that he needs help you know most recently in Whole Cake Island that we see him like say, you know telling Sanji I can't become the pirate king without your help right mm. or I don't know if that's the right wording and it goes all the way back I think it was Arlong Park when he was fighting Arlong yeah. with the swords and he goes like I don't know how to use a sword and I can't navigate I can't cook I can't come up with lies I can't even lie yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I can't even lie so it just like really reflects uh, Luffy as a character of like vulnerable and transparent he is like he's not greedy he's not like oh I'm the most powerful I can do everything by myself he's very like true about how much he needs his his friends and I think that's really valuable and that's something that resonates with me because I think I'm kind of the same and I feel like a lot of people should be like that as well because you know it's okay to ask for help you know and it's okay to acknowledge that you can't do everything by yourself so I think that's really powerful for me in One Piece. That was a, a very beautiful answer. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't peep at these questions because that seemed very well no, prepared? No <laughs> because I just I just I, I'm rereading the manga and I just saw that moment so I was like oh, this is so beautiful so it was like just fresh in my memory well as a follow-up to that question this is completely unrelated but it's from the same person uh, what kind of tablet do you use to draw I use the iPad I'm a Apple girl eighth generation yeah it's uh I think it's 256 gigabytes so plenty of storage for all of the drawings and all of the thumbnails that I have to make and I use the Apple Pencil. Going on from the Arlong Park comment, that's kind of how I feel. Like, I, I can't draw. I can't do that. I, I need you to do that for me. Yeah. I can tell you the vague direction we need to go in, but like you need to take us there. I am your navigator. As an artist and manga fan, have you ever considered drawing your own manga? Oh, absolutely. Oh my <laughs> god. If I wasn't afraid of the health issues that may happen. Honestly, I do. I actually have like a bunch of ideas. Uh, I really like, for example, like uh, Nordic mythology, like, uh, mm. you know, the gods and all of that. So I thought it would be really cool to make a, a manga about that. And I actually do have like drafts. Since... Maybe call it Vinland Saga or something. Oh, yeah, maybe. I honestly haven't read that. So... <laughs> <laughs> But I do have like, you know, obviously the most fun part is, you know, well, for an artist is developing like the characters, their design. So I do have like a couple of sketches of some characters and like what their names would be, their abilities. Mm. I have a couple of drafts of like what the storyline would kind of be. So I don't know, maybe, maybe someday if I find the time. Interesting. That's something I didn't know about you. I uh, look you forward to that development then. I don't even know if I can be a, a mangaka if I'm not Japanese. So it just might be like a... A, you know a comic book a yes, western side it can be a comic book it, it could end up being a, a comic book with like anime style art obviously exciting do you like the way that Oda draws female characters or do you find it to be overly exaggerated oh god as a representative of all of 
female humanity uh choose your answer wisely oh boy that's a tough one because like i don't want to like disrespect anyone or like you know don't worry about disrespecting anyone just like honest opinions okay so honest opinions i mean at the end of the day it's an animated series it's a cartoon and you can even go way back to the cartoons that we used to watch as kids and women have always have like you know big boobs tiny waist big hips like every single time like even what's the uh, major secretary name from powerpuff girls i was just thinking of her i was legitimately like yeah even in powerpuff girls yeah of all places. like we don't see the woman's face but we see her body and no it's we like see a, we see the chest yeah uh, yeah the, uh, we, we we see the attractiveness so like you know it's really hard to uh put oda on the spotlight here because obviously he's not the only one that does this and it would be unfair and i feel like it's something that it's always been done in like animated series I don't mind it. I just don't like when it's sexualized. And I really think Oda does a decent job at that because obviously there are moments and my boy Sanji just fucks it up. And like sometimes it makes me not like him that much. But, um, you know, those are the little moments yeah. and like other stuff that happens that it's like, like I'm not OK with obviously but i know there are for example other anime that are like very intense and aggressive with like the the sexualizing and even like harassment so i think oda does a decent job at not doing too much of that if if at all really because like even if you know robin looks like a certain way or dresses a certain way she's still gonna do some badass shit and like you know and people are not gonna be like you know oh i want to like grab you and like you know do stuff to you like i don't think that's something that happens in one piece so that's why i'm okay with it because like at the end not of the day often. yeah you there can't like a handful of examples but yeah not often oh of course yeah you know at the end of the day as long as like women don't compare themselves to animated cartoons i think we're good like you cannot have that body is unrealistic and if men are mm. shitting on you because you're doing a cosplay and you're not as thin or have the huge boobs then they need to go touch some grass and talk to a real woman <laughs> <laughs> living the 2d lifestyle all oh the yeah life. it's like you do you <laughs> Similarly, uh, you are a big fan of Robin, are you not? Would she be your favorite straw hat, if I recall correctly? Yes, she is. Well, semi-controversial question. Do you prefer pre-time skip or post-time skip Robin? So I'm obviously a big fan of long hair. And I really like the outfits on, you know, post-time skip. Well, the pre-time skip is so classical. And like, I love the fringe. I love the tanner skin as well. I don't know. I, she looks more like unique, I guess. So I really like the design and she does look very different, you know, post time skip. I don't know. I guess I've just gotten used to the post time skip, but I really like post time skip. But both are great designs. The one thing I really miss is the pre time skip hat. Oh my God, the cowboy, That's, cowgirl hat. I wish that Ugh. would come back. Yeah, I know. That is iconic. And I hope Oda does like bring that back at some point in some arc. Just just for fun. Just for the nostalgia. It was very like Indian. Anna Jones. Yeah. Like this badass archaeologist just traversing the world, having adventures. Exactly. Like that. I love that Robin, like the full on archaeologist. What are your thoughts on the live action One Piece cast or the project in general? I'm really excited. I'm nervous as to how they're going to edit some of the effects, but I'm, you know, I'm confident they're going to do a decent job. I'm not expecting like crazy as like animation and like managing to stretch Luffy, make it look like, you know, he would in the anime. But the cast seems really neat i'm especially happy that our main character is from mexico so <laughs> of course yeah and he's just so charming like he's always so like smiling and, and fun and everything having fun he's literally like the human version of luffy it's precisely and sanji's really hot not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> Nami is gorgeous and Usopp is also like really good looking honestly like he's he's hot too like not gonna lie they're yeah. all really good looking this is like a uh, a really good timeline Usopp oh my god I know it's like damn Usopp yeah no I think uh I think the casting is fantastic I think I did they did a really good job with the casting so yeah I'm just excited to see how they're gonna like go through the story I really hope they keep the storyline you know intact as possible because you know how people tend to change a book to a movie and so on so i really hope they don't change too much of the story so we'll see yeah we will see i believe episodes one and two have finished filming oh really so, uh, 
We still have quite a while to wait, but uh, it's happening. Oh, and the editing too, because like episode one, we see Luffy stretching, so it's going to take a while to edit. Yeah. Uh, here's a bizarre, like bizarrely specific question, but I thought it was interesting. Has Liam ever thought your art was too good for a particular joke or thumbnail and he needed you to lower the quality? Maybe our recent Blackbeard? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe I went crazy with the with the shading and everything and you're like I just want two colors two bold colors I think that's the only one that it comes to my head right now like I went crazy with like multiple like shading and everything and like highlights and you just needed just purple and black that's it basically Gracia did this wonderful realistic evil looking black beard with these like beautiful skin tones and contours and i looked at and i was like ah, this is just not right i spent hours on it i know we were going back and forth for quite a while like yeah it was a tough one once you went to sleep i was like oh i'm such a dick but i, I need you to redo it <laughs> i woke up and i was like holy shit <laughs> it's like 10 messages spam and i'm like what did i do <laughs> I felt so bad for doing that to you, especially because I knew that's what you were going to wake up to. Oh, it's like, okay. it was, uh, I was just like, what? Why? Why isn't it working? Why isn't it the thing that I thought I, w I wanted? As, yeah. No, it's okay. That happens. Yeah. It happens fairly frequently, just usually not to that large of a scale, I would say. It's all right. We fixed it pretty quickly, I would say. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly. We could have saved a lot of effort. It's fine. It was, it, it's always good practice. Who is your least favorite character to draw? Kaido. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and like the times so besides the thumbnail guys i also do like uh, reaction drawings for his videos and he usually sends me like a list of like 10 different reactions and he mixes and matches characters and reactions and whatever so the first two batches so like 20 characters in total it was like four Kaidos, I think, in total. And he was like making weird faces. He was like, <laughs> shock Kaido, disgusted Kaido, like, you know, and I was like... Seductive Kaido as well was a very important one. Only Oda knows how to adapt Kaido with different expressions, as we saw in the chapter where he's doing the flirty and all of that. Like, you know, only Oda can nail that. So adapting Kaido's face structure into like a weird clown, like, you know, expression was really difficult. So I was like, for this third batch, I was like, you better not send me anymore. <laughs> I think you've had enough. <laughs> I anticipated that as well. I was like, I promise no more Kaidos. Oh my God. It's just really, yeah, like he's such a like tough character. So it's really difficult to make him like a goofy. And most of the reactions you need are goofy. So it was, it was tough. Or exaggerated and over the top. It's, it is a common uh, complaint from all of my channel artists. They're like, oh, Kaido again. Oh, that guy, man. Kaido and Eustace Kid. People also don't like drawing Kid because just too much Metal oh my and god yeah in detail i always sneak my way with kid when you ask me to draw him so i just put the fur coat like further more forward so you can't see his metal <laughs> arm because i'm like i'm not drawing that metal arm ever again it's very very sneaky but i like it i think this is a good time to give a little disclaimer to everyone i am not the one that draws the stick cardboard <laughs> cutout figures please like they are fantastic but i feel so bad when people are telling me like oh my god your cardboard figures are so great they're not mine they're not mine like it's your editor right yeah one of my editors does yes. those. Uh, his name is patrick if you're looking for someone to praise for the other uh, popsicle stick figures yeah the popsicle art is all patrick the art team of grand line review currently consists of five people including the lovely gracia here gracia i would say does the uh, the key art which is all yes. of the thumbnail like the really important stuff that i need someone to nail that I need someone who will put up with me as well. <laughs> no, but I gotta say, like, on your, your recent videos, you're putting out more art, like, from different artists. It is just amazing. Like, they're so talented. You're so creative, too, because I try to do my art, like closer to Oda's style so like you you have like a library of like you know actual one piece content but your other artists make these like insanely unique art styles that is so cool like I wish I could do that like it's so creative like it's so funny but like cute and creative and it's I don't know it's, it's a fantastic so big shout out to the other four yeah shout out to them I picked them all specifically because they had that unique voice because I didn't yeah. just want another person who was going to replicate one piece because and eh, May as well open <laughs> things up. No, I, I already have uh, the wonderful Gracia. And you do have your own unique voice. I don't think you see it, but you definitely do. Like, you can always tell. A, I have my Gracia little dry. spice. Be honest. What is Liam like behind the scenes? Oh, boy. I feel like I should answer these on message so you don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Should I just leave the room while you answer? Just leave the room and don't sneak peek on your editor's work, please. No, he's uh, he's literally the exact same person. Besides work talk, we also talk about other stuff like, you know, mainly One Piece related, but we've also like talked about each other, like, you know, about our lives, getting to know each other a little better. And he's just, you're very like funny. You have a lot of like sarcastic humor. And I appreciate that because it is hilarious. I love the dark humor so much. <laughs> you're just so transparent and it's great because it makes me feel comfortable to be transparent as well and bring out my sarcastic humor too. <laughs> So it makes also like work so much more fun because like, you know, we can tell each other like bluntly, like, okay, this is not what I wanted. Like, can you change this or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. Like, it's never like, I don't know. It never felt like a work, like, you know, business relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with you completely. I, I think it's very valuable that I can be blunt with you. And sometimes I feel like I'm a bit too <laughs> blunt <laughs> at times. <laughs> no, listen, and this might be a good uh, advice for artists out there. You have to do what the customer is asking you to do. You cannot be too proud with your work when it is when it is something you're doing for someone else. Like if it is your own art, you can be as creative as you want and do whatever you want. But if the customer is asking you for something specifically, and it's maybe something different from your own style or whatever and you really want to do this commission you have to adapt listen take notes take feedback and if they're telling you to change something change it like don't argue like no but this is better i think this is better i'm the artist i know better no just to get your <laughs> commissions going because it's really hard to know what to do when you're commissioned so i i hope that you know helps a little bit on how to to talk to your customers it's really valuable just on that this isn't a question anyone asked but i'm interested in because i am not the only person that you work for do you have uh, any other clients that maybe are not as specific as me and just have more vague instructions and you just are kind of left floating and not knowing particularly what to do or or is everyone just yeah. a hard ass like I am not at all you know I have a couple of like you know one-time commissions and they're just like you know I want myself drawn as a one piece character and they're always very nice and they're like oh this is so great I love it and it just makes me feel so good and so there's a, not a lot of like you know talking back and forth, back and forth. I think that is more with thumbnails. So with Joy Girl as well, we do have full conversations about the thumbnails. We build sketches. She tells me to change something and I, you know, send her options. So like it's a little more meticulous like it is with you. And I get it because with thumbnail, it's not just a picture like, okay, I want myself drawn as a One Piece character. No, this is like, okay, this video is about this. It's going to have these elements, but then there's going to be text on it. So you have to arrange. So it's a whole different commission than just like a portrait trade or or whatever so yeah i think the other commissions are pretty simple and i think the more detailed ones are the two australians can you see you know <laughs> <laughs> damn australians it, yeah these damn australians it must be something in their country i will say that as time goes on working with you, I'm only getting more and more detailed. Like looking at the latest like brief document I sent you, I not only have the like mock thumbnail I do, but I've also included instructions on like specific proportions, yeah. specific colors and Oh uh, yeah. It's crazy, but <laughs> Although sometimes I, I don't read those sometimes because you end up telling me, um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned I wanted this color on this and you did the complete opposite. <laughs> However, it is really helpful that you do put those instructions because I do read them. Sometimes I just, I don't have them side by side when I'm working sometimes. <laughs> I should so that I don't miss those little details. Yeah, no, sorry. I think I may have a tendency to like overload you with instructions nah. sometimes and not uh, word them correctly either communication is a thing i need communication to is key yeah no you're very good at it like uh if you just send me the mock-up and then do whatever you can with this i would be like where do i start <laughs> so no it's good i enjoy your essays <laughs> they are very extensive documents you would be shocked at like the effort i put into thumbnails and uh, yeah. oh no i know but i will say that the greatest benefit of working with you is not needing to have to focus on the actualization the technical making it happen essentially what i get to do is i just get to like play around with shapes and atmosphere and sort of dictate a vague feeling and look for the thumbnail and then you take that 
and you enhance the crap out of it. You make it <laughs> superb. I try, I try. But yeah, it's pretty crazy how the mock-up turns into the real thing. Like once you assemble everything together, it's crazy. Like, mm. yeah, it's really like both are work because yeah, I give you like seven images, but you like layer them together and size them and like put some like drop shadow and like, you know, glow and background. So yeah, it's a crazy thing we were able to build. We may have answered this already, but what is the worst or most uncomfortable clear instructions Liam has ever given you on clear instructions oh my god this is hard because you always do put very very like thorough instructions I mean maybe I think it's maybe the Doflamingo one but that was my oh, mistake the impel down one yeah but that was my mistake because I didn't see the last reference image where you actually see all the three sections of the cell. Oh, yeah, 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 that one. Oh, that was tricky. Yeah, I... That was my mistake because I, I remember I was texting you and it's like, wait, so you want this, this and that? And then I kept reading it. I'm like, never mind, I got it. That was a tricky thumbnail. Essentially, yeah. what I did was I highlight which parts of the thumbnail were supposed to be on different layers and what yeah. they were called. And they were like three different types of walls. And I had stupid names for all three of them. So I can see why that was definitely uh, unclear and not helpful <laughs> it was very tricky and then like trying to uh adjust the light the pink and the blue well it was really tricky but yeah, i think it was one of the thumbnails that i got more most feedback from because i always put them on my instagram and everyone was like this is amazing like this is the coolest thumbnail like so far it's one of my favorites that we've made because yeah. yeah i really love the depth and the lighting effect and i think doflamingo is just he's like an instant oh, cheat sheet such to a, success yeah. if you draw such him. a cool character what is your favorite nose in one piece nose mm. Knows. That is so bizarre. Probably Robin's. Robin, okay. Yeah, I like it because you can tell it's not the typical like pointy nose. And myself yeah. having a asymmetrical nose, I kind of relate to it, I guess. That's nose appreciation post. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're diving pretty deep into why Robin's your favorite character, the long hair and the nose. It's just Robin is you and the tan. Well, you know who also has a really cool nose? A uh, kid. It has like a weird diamond shape. I'm not sure shape. I've ever noticed. Well, when you're asked to draw it 20 times, you gotta notice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm looking at it now. I see what you mean. There's like this sort of like... Like a jagged, diamond? Kind of looks like a Pokemon badge. I never looked at it that way, but now I can't unsee it. But, you know, the best nose is Buggy's nose, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> the red nose. I wonder if he has like a nose underneath or if that is his real nose. What do you think? Predictions now. I mean, it's One Piece. It might as well be his real nose. I would hope it's his real... Oh my God. <laughs> I just found a picture of Buggy without the red nose. I was going to tell you, like, it would be so funny trying to draw in and see how it looks like you gotta send me that uh, let's <laughs> oh my god have you haunted maybe it, it's fairly cursed I, I miss the red nose now i'm sending it to you no <laughs> that is <laughs> horrifying <laughs> like no this is a cursed image and it must be deleted <laughs> <laughs> i'm afraid it's on the internet for all time now oh this is like an entire subgenre buggy with no makeup and no nose oh my god all natural burr face buggy. i'll send you one more and then we'll move on to something oh relevant god. that will probably be in the video <laughs> i don't even want to see that like this is haunting me already <laughs> I mean, that one is less horrifying than the first one. Yeah, that one is just normal, kind of. Yeah, it's like a handsome buggy. Technical question now. Do you get paid per thumbnail or are you on payroll? Payroll, right? It's kind of what we do. I don't think it's how this person meant it, though. Like, how do we uh, dissect how much I owe you, I think is more the oh, question. Okay, yeah. So uh, it depends on, you know, every customer. But with you, I I kind of like have a, a an agenda where I write down like how how much each thumbnail is worth so that at the end of the month I can do like an invoice and then I can put like uh you know Shanks thumbnail this much and then like a uh, Luffy thumbnail gear five this much and so at the end it like adds up and then you just make one payment per month because uh we realized it was really painful to be paying one by one after <laughs> you realized you wanted to have like at least three yeah. thumbnails a week so it was like yeah back in the day there were times where I was paying you up to like four or five times a week yeah. and it just led to me getting buried under all of these receipts and yeah. paperwork and <laughs> tax. It's all about tax. Like, as oh, much yeah. as it can be condensed is, is great. I think the other thing is that 
thumbnails themselves are itemized like yeah. generally you will charge me per layer so if a thumbnail has five layers like say you know shanks in the foreground luffy yeah. in the background and then maybe like a sun or a moon or something that's yeah. three items within that thumbnail that will yeah. be calculated individually yeah exactly yeah that's how we do it yeah good yeah works for me it works for you hopefully <laughs> it does <laughs> Uh, completely unrelated to everything question now. Chicken or beef? Beef. Okay, elaborate. I really like a, a burger, steak, meatballs. Yeah. Getting hungry. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime here. Um, do you have an opinion on lamb? They didn't ask that. I'm just curious. Like, which is the superior meat? Chicken, beef, lamb, or kangaroo? Obviously, not the last two in the list. <laughs> <laughs> I would honestly put fish first and then beef. And then chicken. Fish. Yeah, I really like salmon, tuna, like that stuff. This is going to cause a rift between us. It's only because I try to be healthy. So, mm. you know, taste wise, obviously beef. I can't say I know what lamb or kangaroo tastes like. Have you never eaten lamb? Is that like not a common thing outside of Australia? Because lamb is one of our major meats. Well, you you can find it. I don't know if lamb is the same as veal, is it? Uh, no, not quite. No, right? Yeah. So veal no, I don't is think baby so. lamb. Oh, that's even sadder. I, I mean, I've seen it at restaurants, but I don't know anyone that really goes like, oh, yeah, I had lamb last weekend. It's not that common, you know, less uh, kangaroos, obviously. We don't even have them. So All right. this is not a question, but I'm going to turn it into a question. Detailed tips for YouTuber artist setting equipment rules, video techniques, question mark. Do you just have general tips on digital art, I suppose? Yeah, I can. I guess it can be digital art and I can incorporate a little bit of filmmaking. Okay, so really the tablet you get doesn't really matter as long as you're comfortable with it and as long as you have the right softwares to create art because you don't have to have the most expensive tablet or buy softwares to create art. Like there's multiple of free softwares that you can use that have like the same brushes and like techniques and like everything that you need. So digital art can be really, really affordable. It doesn't have to be like exclusive you know for you know someone with with money or whatever and then just practice a lot watch a lot of tutorials on youtube if you're trying out a new software i did it a lot i use procreate and at first i opened the app and i had no idea like where even to start so i watched tutorials i figured out how layers uh, work how uh you know different sizes opacities blending modes so really really navigate through that practice a lot just like sketch whatever you don't have to like create a masterpiece like the first thing you do so yeah just like practice a lot and if you want to make like you know videos about it there's multiple like tools you can use in within the apps you can even like record a time lapse of your progress and then you can like do a tutorial about it and, or you can literally have like your phone recording your hands on the tablet I do that sometimes and it's a lot better because you can see how much pressure you're applying on the tablet to create certain things so yeah there's multiple things you can do it's very a very creative environment uh, a lot to explore I'm still learning so <laughs> Right, so very accessible. Basically, the yeah. only thing you need to spend money on is a tablet. Is yeah, and there's multiple options, like affordable ones. Yeah, I'm sure you could get like a super cheap Wacom or something. For, like, exactly. Maybe even yeah, around, like the fifty dollar mark or whatever. I used to have one of those before I had my my iPad, but I saved up and I got it. <laughs> Working hard, <laughs> and it's really it's really an investment because if you want to do art for like you know for a living, at the end of the day, with all of your commissions and everything, you're really gonna get that money back. So if you really invest on a good tablet, you know, obviously you're going to work better. You're going to have better results. So you're going to sell more and then you'll, you know, get that money back. Yep. Just like YouTube, you invest exactly. in some yeah. decent entry level equipment. Eventually it can pay off. Exactly. And then you can upgrade to get a better camera, a better microphone, etc. All right. So a bit of very uh, intelligent foreshadowing from one of my viewers here. Do you like Hunter Hunter and are you excited to draw Hunter <laughs> Hunter thumbnails? Yeah. Yes. Also, you know, it's it's kind of sad because I only watched the anime. I loved it, obviously, a lot. Uh, but I haven't continued reading the manga, sadly. But it is something that I really want to do. And I think uh, I would be really excited to also color new panels for the new manga. Even if I have no clue what's going on at the beginning, but I'll catch up <laughs> eventually. But I'm really excited to like color, uh, you know, Hunter Hunter manga panels. I don't know how detailed they are, if the art is like crazy or anything, but it 
depends. Sometimes because Togashi has health conditions, a lot of it can be simpler than One Piece. Like a lot of white space, a lot of what I would say classic One Piece was with very minimal shading on faces. But then if Togashi's assistants get involved, then they get yeah. super detailed with these very ornate backgrounds and stuff like that. So it's kind of a mishmash Hunter Hunter between excruciatingly detailed and just flat simple. Well, the flat simple could work as a good canvas for coloring because I can just like go extra and add my own backgrounds or whatever. So definitely want to try that. And yes, Liam wants new Hunter Hunter thumbnails. So that is definitely in the I works. Do. On my secret whiteboard over here, which no one <laughs> else can see, I have a Hunter Hunter video plan currently up. So we will require thumbnails for at least six videos that I've got planned oh boy. sitting up there. Plus the one piece that have that I have to keep doing. <laughs> At the very least, Hunter Hunter isn't quite at the frequency of One Piece. I'll have more time, like, spaced out, yeah. So, for this interview discussion thing, I've asked you to prepare your special tools. Have you done so? Yes, sir. This was very popular last time, so we are once again going to do the, uh, the draw-off. I have my tools, sort of, my very rudimentary kindergarten drawing yeah. equipment. Old school. <laughs> and of course, since this is your video to ask Gracia questions and such, I've decided to take suggestions from you guys for what this challenge should be. And you've oh, pretty boy. unanimously spoken. <laughs> also, Gracia has decided what I am going to be drawing. So before I reveal what my viewers have chosen for you, would you like to state what my challenge is? So I'm going to challenge you to do something that you're you know, basically unnatural at doing, which is mm -hmm. designing a thumbnail. Oh, for fuck's sake. We're gonna see how your brain works, like, on a, like, you know, on a deadline or whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you, like, a description of a video, obviously made <laughs> okay. up, because I don't have the creativity to come up with a One Piece theory in the spot, and I don't want to take someone else's idea either. So <clears throat> the video is about I, Grecia, I'm a One Piece character, okay? So the video is about how I infiltrated among the samurai in Wano into the raid. I am not a devil fruit user, but I am seeking one specifically. And a certain someone just died, I hope, and I want his fruit. So I am looking for Kanjuro's fruit. So the video discusses about how Grecia, the character, you know, is in the raid of Wano and is stealing the brush brush fruit. I'm not actually sure what it's called in English or Japanese, actually. This is really bad. I should remember this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kanjuro's fruit, you know, the drawing one. No, so no, the Fude Fude no Mi. Oh, there you called. go. Um, and this is very useful because I'm going to need to see it for reference, I think. Yeah, there you go. So you're going to, you know, build up a really clickbaity thumbnail that people would be like, oh my God, I really want to see what happens here. So... Action. I'm just going to make sure I understand this. So, Grecia, you have infiltrated the One Piece world. You've infiltrated the raid specifically with the mission to take Conjurer's Devil Fruit. Exactly. Yes. Okay. You don't know if I'm good or evil, so it'll be all your interpretation if I'm a good character or I'm an evil character. Um, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> my challenge for you, <laughs> and I need to emphasize that I did not select this. It was pretty just overwhelmingly stated my yeah. audience want you to draw me okay again using four sword style you say what four sword style <laughs> and in case you don't know what four sword style is i'm about to send you the reference image they're referring to i think i know what you're talking <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was gonna be. Yeah. It was gonna involve the butt. I'm gonna be Whenever generous. Whenever Liam's around, it involves the butt. Generous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be generous and give you a nice booty. I, I would appreciate that. Surely it would be if I've worked out to that degree that I can use four sword style. It should be pretty good. <laughs> I wonder if it's even possible. For this challenge, we are going to be given five minutes each. Okay. Are you ready, Gracia? Let me open. To draw. Let me open my program as well. Open your program, please. Yep. All right. Am I going to do you shirtless as well? Up to you. I just, I sadly cannot provide you with any reference material for that. Oh boy. Okay, I am ready. Okay, then we will begin the drawing challenge in three, two, one, go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sports Five, will be black four, so. three, two, one. And time is up, even though I'm still... Yep, time is up. <laughs> okay, who do you think should go first? I'll go first. <laughs> You'll go first? All right. Let's see if I, uh, <clears throat> I can show it on camera. Oh, my God. You uh, have been very generous with those muscles. <laughs> yeah. I can't angle it properly. What does it What does it say on the shorts? <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can. It says, I love kangaroo meat. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a reference to something we were discussing off camera. Yep. Oh, that was off camera. Wait, there we go. That is incredibly good. You've gotten, I mean... <laughs> You've got, in all modesty, you've gotten some very good shapes happening there. It's because you need a good grip of the sword, so. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad someone understands. I think this is officially the weirdest fan art that anyone's ever done of me. Yeah, you can use it as your next uh, profile picture. The shirtless me is also very generous, I would say. <laughs> that is a very peak universe me. All right. Would we like to now lower our expectations for this? <laughs> so you asked me to draw a thumbnail, which was about you stealing Conjuro's devil fruit. Correct. So from that, I took three major elements. Okay. One, you. Two, devil fruit. Three, Conjuro. And I have come up with this. <laughs> so I am so, evil. <laughs> I'll hold it up so you can see. Yeah, you're obviously evil. So there's you here. Is right? Kanjiro like crawling like from his deathbed or like? Yeah, so what's happening is you are holding the devil fruit very evilly. Also take note, I've, I've made sure to include your breasts as a clickbaity element because that's just how we need to do it. I got, I got big boobs, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, one piece proportions. So you're holding Kanjiro's devil fruit and above the devil fruit is the ghost of Kanjiro just floating up there. That is <laughs> genius. Like, you know, this guy is like uh, preparing a thumbnail you know, in five <laughs> minutes. And then he's going to ask me to draw that in real life. <laughs> I mean, you say that and it may actually be true. It would be fun to 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 make it a real thumbnail. In terms of structure, I basically just went like golden ratio, like big thing here, slightly bigger thing yeah. there for the devil fruit and smaller element up top. There you go. I hope it's balanced. Uh, yeah. Anyone trying to uh, create thumbnails here is the prime example of, of Liam's uh, thought process. So, All right. Oh well, Gracia, thank you so much for stopping by again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, which I do on a daily basis, but yes. especially in a format like this. I'd love to have you on again. You're good fun. Uh, is there <laughs> anything you'd like to say to, to all of the people? Just huge thanks for all of your questions. Pretty sure there are more. So I'll make sure to like look through the posts and see them and hope maybe I'll answer some of those behind the scenes we'll see we'll see but yeah, thank we'll you see. thank you so much for uh for everything for supporting me for yeah always supporting my art it really means a lot and yeah i'll continue to make awesome thumbnails for liam fantastic well thank you so much again and uh yeah i don't know how to end video so goodbye goodbye